The year is 1957, and you've decided that you'd like to buy a model of a Lockheed Super G Constellation. Would you buy Ravel's Eastern Airlines Connie or Monogram's iconic TWA Super G? We're going to discuss this decision in this episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. But first, I have a question. Raise your hand if you were ever home from school with a bad cold and your mom and dad went down to the corner Rexall drugstore to get some cough medicine. And in that little section back by the uh, soda fountain, <clears throat> there was a shelf that looked kind of like this. Well, the reason I'm asking this, and you can tell if I sound a little hoarse, I'm recovering from COVID and uh, thankfully a light case. But uh, while I was at a commission, I was enjoying uh, looking at my model collection and it dawned on me that the color of the box tops was such a factor in our decision to buy these models. If you went with the Eastern Connie, it built up into a beautiful model that could uh, be either put on the stand or with landing gear. Uh, the windows were molded into the fuselage and the decals uh, covered them as you see here. If you went with the TWA kit, which by the way, also cost 98 cents, both kits, then your buildup looked like this. Clear plastic windows, boarding stairs, stewardess figures, uh, power tug on the, uh, on the lower left, and uh, the model was molded in silver and white. Quite a value for 98 cents. But why did you decide either one of these models? Was it the box top? The Ravel cover was obviously more vivid and the airplane was flying. The TWA cover was uh, an action scene with ground figures and everything, but the color was, uh, I remember thinking even as a kid, a little bit washed out. But did it really matter? Well, let's revisit the topic of color in model box art. We've discussed this in a number of other videos that you'll find on the channel about uh, model box art. <clears throat> but let's just say you wanted a uh, model of a Russian MiG. Now I'm gonna mix the era. I'm just showing you the visual differences uh, in how covers were treated. This is obviously the uh, famous Aurora uh, MiG-19. And here's Ravel's MiG-21 many years later, but a whole different treatment of the uh, coloration on the cover. How about a World War II fighter taking off? Again, just a whole different way of looking at it. How about a model of uh, America's then brand new jet airliner, the 707, or the American Airlines jet flagship? But I think you can see where I'm going with this. <clears throat> but let's talk about primary colors which were red, yellow, and blue, and factored into toy design, uh, and uh, really a huge factor in model box top illustration. Now, to give you an example of, uh, oh, let's just say a logo that uses red, yellow, and blue, how about uh, that one? Or that one? Or, well, I think you see where I'm going. All four major model manufacturers in the United States use red, yellow, and blue, and white in their logo design. Early models had the uh, box art printed literally right on the cardboard, uh, like the Strombecker series. They did a series of wood airliners and uh, other aircraft. And here's good old red, yellow, and blue. And this even tricks your eye. The airplane is what they call a duotone. It's a screen image uh, of a photo. And uh, the American colors are orange, but uh, it's actually red and your eye is kind of tricked into thinking it's orange with all the yellow that surrounds the airplane. Pretty cool. This is probably the uh, poster boy for red, yellow, and blue model box tops with a uh, duotone of TV star Bob Cummings who flew a uh, Molt Taylor aero car on his program. I tuned in just to see the plane. I don't even remember what the show was about. All right, let's take a red, white, and blue airplane and we add the yellow in the uh, type. And there again is your primary colors. Uh, sometimes it can be subtle. Uh, the frog kit of the uh, magnificent uh, Bristol Britannia, $5 back in uh, 1959. Uh, if you take that box art away, what do you have? Red, yellow, and blue. 
sometimes it would be more subliminal. You have the red, yellow, and blue as the background colors on the Hawk uh, 148 scale F-104. Beautiful kit in the uh, chrome plating, if you ever did that. You just had to remember to scrape off the chrome plating before you glued any pieces together. And then you could even go more subtle with a red missile, a yellow sky, and a blue terror cruiser, not to mention the blue Renwall blueprint base that uh, was standard on all air kits. And more subtle still would be the monogram uh, Pratt & Whitney Wasp, where a blue sky blue background, yellow table, and red uh, accents in the engine. But what's really attracting your eye is Tommy's red sweater. Hey, Dad, let's build this model together. It's great. Subtle. Then you get to the covers where they would <clears throat> mix the color, uh, red, yellow, and a little bit of blue, and throw in a secondary color of green. And you've got this magnificent image by Jack Lenwood. Speaking of Lenwood, how about that for red, yellow, and blue? And even in the marketing <clears throat> of these kits, you'd see... Uh, uh, you know, booklets that would be inside a missile kit or something. What's the predominant color here? It's obviously yellow. So let's talk about yellow in the use of, uh, of box art. It was huge. Doesn't get any uh, more bold than this. This was the reissue of the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger, big 148 scale kit that originally came with ground equipment. And then they reissued it without the ground equipment for a dollar less and just said, well, you know what? Let's just use a yellow background. Uh, yellow with other colors was big, but here you've got the uh, supersonic gift set with a yellow sky. Yellow and orange was big. And notice the use of the bold use of black on the airplanes uh, for contrast. Speaking of uh, <clears throat> black with yellow and orange, doesn't get any better than the Lindbergh uh, XF-91 Thunder Scepter. And oh, look at that side panel. Gee, red, yellow, and blue. Now, this is a yellow sky with an orange, <clears throat> I'm sorry, yellow orange uh, combination with the orange uh, ground, but uh, your eye doesn't really see it that way. It's a ramp with a sky at sunset and a B-58 flying overhead. And yes, I've talked about this before and I'm gonna talk about it again. Here's a close up of the pilot getting in the airplane. Uh, the cover's by Jack Lenwood. Jack uh, had a penchant for playing little tricks on us unsuspecting 12 year old model builders he would uh, do stuff like this. What is the pilot standing on to get in the airplane? I think he's missing the uh, boarding ladder. How about a yellow airplane on a yellow background? Or a burst of yellow on a dark background just to attract your eye, Jack's beautiful uh, Boeing 2707. And sometimes they just use a touch of yellow, just sneak it in, uh, just to create some drama. Now, using the magic of Photoshop, let's change this to a daytime scene with a blue sky and blue lettering. <clears throat> Look at what it does to that uh, cover. Really dramatic change. I like it better that way. Now, you wouldn't think green would be a color used in box art, but especially with Ravel, green was uh, employed quite, uh, quite uh, liberally in a lot of their covers. Here you've got a bright silver F-101 on a dark green sky. We have a multicolor Swiss Air DC-7 on a gradated, uh, graduated uh, green sky. Here's a dark Douglas B-66 against a light green sky or a light F-104 Starfighter against a dark green sky with a touch of orange uh, thrown in in the upper right, complementary color. Uh, here's a great example. And again, Jack Lenwood, take the blue and the green on the uh, J-35s and <clears throat> mix them way down and look at what you have in the background. Those are the exact colors of the airplanes uh, mixed down in uh, hue and intensity and value to get your background color. Brilliant. Talk about the concept of foreign color. What that means is you use colors you wouldn't associate with the structure or the scene. In other words, a green sky with a yellow B-47. Uh, let's take a look at what a real B-47 looks like doing a Jado takeoff. That would be like so. 
quite different than Joe Catula's rendition. And here's a question. How many X-15 flights were launched over green cloud bases? Hmm. I believe the answer is none. But again, Jack can make it believable. And speaking of Jack, this is an amazing uh, discovery. <clears throat> this is one of the very valuable pieces in my collection, a, a real treasure. It's a comp that Jack did for a study of a Ravel kit with the P-38 in the night fighter version. And um, it was, the background was never painted in. A comp is, uh, it stands for comprehensive. It's a tight color sketch to illustrate what a cover might look like. And it never progressed past this point. But this is the original art, and you can see the actual color of the illustration board surrounding the two airplanes. Now, notice that the blue tone of the sky is painted into both airplanes, even though the background isn't there. Take a look at the planes. Focus on those right now. And I'm going to add the sky using some digital magic. And look what happens to those airplanes. Isn't that amazing? Too bad this kit was never uh, produced. I would have bought it. And speaking of blue, you've got dark blue, and you have light blue with a dark blue purplish airplane and a little band of purple at the horizon, all connecting it. Blue airplanes on a blue background. And uh, before we show you the next example of a blue cover, here's a question. How would you take vertical missiles like this Nike Ajax battery or these guys, and get them onto a horizontal box. Well, you do it like that. Blue sky, blue Renwall blueprint uh, base, even the Renwall blueprint models <laughs> logo is in blue, clever. And uh, using that same uh, composition, uh, Ravel used the, uh, the Hawk missile battery. Same thing, green, uh, yellowish uh, horizon. Uh, the green uh, army figures and the blue sky with the white missile. The missile kits were really all over the map in terms of coloration. You notice most of them had some uh, smaller version of the missile firing in the background. But uh, here are three examples of uh, some Ravel missile kits that uh, just used every possible color combination you can think of. But a big color in uh, missile covers was red. Usually the missiles were red themselves against multicolored background or uh, a white missile with a red background like this Nike Hercules that's in orbit over a volcanic planet with three other, uh, you know what, I, I give up. But uh, boy, it sure attracted your attention. I had this kid as a kid. It, it seemed about three feet long. It was huge, but uh, it was actually 21 inches long as it says on the box. Uh, got an A in my science project about uh, two stage rockets with this kit. Thank you, KMT. Here's another example with a red uh, background and a blue and white missile. One of my all time favorite covers. And <clears throat> take a look at the landing gear. You notice there's some wires that are connecting the gear, even though the missile is taking off. Really? What's going on there? Well, those are uh, landing gear locks. The uh, nose gear retracts forward and the main gear retract aft on the Regulus test missile, which was uh, ground-based. So they would uh, put these safety wires on the uh, struts to prevent inadvertent retraction of the landing gear. Well, guess what, Jack? <clears throat> here's, I'm sorry, here's an example uh, close-ups of the uh, safety wires. And Jack left them on in the uh, cover to make you look at them. I sure did. I remember buying this kit, beautiful, beautiful model. And uh, I kept thinking, why, how could they retract the gear with the, with the wires? Now, how about brown, brown sky and morning? Well, brown skies were big in these kits and uh, somehow they really worked. You have the Aurora CF-105 Arrow. Comets, uh, Sky King, Cessna 310, even uh, Lenwood's F-27 in uh, Palm Springs or wherever, somewhere in Southern California in the, in the summertime, uh, with a brown sky, really? And of course, the classic Navy kits, the A-4D and the uh, F-8 Crusader with the biblical rays of light coming out of brown clouds.
Okay. But here's probably one of the most bombastic and most popular model covers ever painted. Jack Lenwood's beautiful B-17 Memphis Bell. It's got all sorts of Lenwoodisms. Uh, the airplane is kind of stretched and pulled and tweaked and there's perspective stuff going on and they're dropping bombs, uh, diving down from 20,000 feet with flak. I, I, don't even I don't even know how you would describe the color of the background. But undoubtedly, from what I've heard from every collector I've ever talked to, this was Jack Lenwood's most popular cover. So there you have it, a look at uh, model box color philosophy, color psychology, how color was used to uh, sell these models and create excitement uh, for all of us who went into that hobby shop. Actually, yeah, that's better. Thank you for watching Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machette. And as always, special thanks to my dear model friends here in uh, Los Angeles and Sean Day of Ravel Models, Jack Lenwood, who I met through the Society of Illustrators of Los Angeles, and a special shout out to Max of Max's Models, a dear friend of the channel and uh, warmest uh, greetings to any of Max's glue troopers who might be watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, again, apologies for my voice, but until next time, take care. <laughs>